Ahoy and welcome! My name is Clement Helm and this is CodeChip Testing Tuesday number 14. Recently we've talked a lot about behavior-driven development with Cucumber and RSpec, but I never actually showed you how to integrate these tools into your Ruby applications. This is why today this episode is about setting up RSpec. We're going to set up one standalone Ruby application and one Rails application, because there are a few differences in the setup. Let's get started with the standalone application first. We create an empty directory Ruby app for our application. In the directory, we create a gem file, add Ruby gems as source and add RSpec as a dependency. When we install the bundle, we see that three additional RSpec gems got installed. RSpec core, RSpec expectations and RSpec mocks. The RSpec gem is only a collection of these three gems, so feel free to include them separately. For instance, if you want to use bogus for mocking, like we did in last week's episode, you can just add RSpec core and RSpec expectations to your gem file, because you don't need RSpec mocks. When we run RSpec now, it complains that there is no spec folder. Let's create it and run RSpec again. It finishes without running any examples. Now let's add an example to our application. Let's call it appspec.rb. So we want to describe our app and it should launch. So app launch should be true. Our spec tells us uninitialized constant app. Let's create the app class. By default, application code lives in the lib directory. So let's put a class app into this lib directory. But our spec still complains that there is no constant app. We need to tell the spec file where to look for our app class. Adding the line require app to our spec file resolves the problem. Now we get a different error message that the method launch does not exist. But wait a minute, why did rspec find our app rb file? It's in a lib directory. So how did the require statement know where to look for it? The answer is a Ruby global variable that contains the load paths for files. If we add the line puts dollar colon to our spec file and run rspec again, we see all the directories that Ruby checks when requiring a file. At the very top, there is our spec directory and our lib directory. RSpec added these two directories because it's the convention to put code in there. But back to our error message. We still need to add a class method launch to the app. Let's remove this debug output and add the method. And our launch method should be true. And now we've got a working test suite with RSpec. These few steps will work for every Ruby application you create. So you could also use it with your Rails applications. However, there is a more convenient option. The RSpec Rails gem is the easiest way of setting up RSpec for Rails. Let's create a Rails application first. Let's call it RSpec Rails app. So let's move into the directory of our application and add RSpec Rails to our gem file. We only need it for our development and test environment. Let's install RSpec Rails using Bundler. RSpec Rails provides us with an installation generator. So we can call Rails generate RSpec install. This creates our spec directory with a spec helper RB file that contains the RSpec configuration for our app. There is also another file, .rspec, where we can insert default options for the RSpec runner. By default, it contains the color option, which creates colorful output on a terminal. But we could also choose a different formatter for RSpec results or other options in here. Now that we're set up, let's run RSpec. Usually, you will want to run your examples with bundle exec RSpec. This will load all the dependencies from your gem file, so they are available in your examples. It's cumbersome to write bundle exec all the time, though. 
That's why in Rails 4 we can create a bin stub for it. Running bundle bin stub rspec core creates such a bin stub in our bin directory. So this file will set up our bundle for us and run rspec. Let's give it a try. It works. Using rspec rails has several advantages. For example, we don't need to manually require our application files. Another advantage is that rspec automatically creates spec files for us. Let's create a model user. Rails generate model user and let's give it a username which is a string. RSpec created a spec file for our user model automatically. When we run RSpec now, it will remind us first to run our migrations because we added a new database model. So now our test database contains the user and now we've got a pending example that reminds us to add some examples for our user. Pretty neat. So now that you know how to set up RSpec, there's no excuse anymore not to use it. If you haven't already, check out our other episodes on RSpec. I will link to them in the blog post. Next week, I will show you how to integrate Cucumber into your Ruby applications. Then you should be completely settled for your behavior-driven development workflow. See you next week, keep it real, and always stay shipping.